Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a new day in Pennsylvania. I was watching the debate over the House side, and I didn't certainly agree with everything Representative Baker said, but I agreed with one thing he said. This is a monumentous piece of legislation. This is the most important piece of social legislation we have passed in 30 or 40 years. Marijuana is medicine and is coming to Pennsylvania. I can also make a little bit of news today and announce that we will be having a signing ceremony for this bill in the Capitol Rotunda approximately 1 o'clock this Sunday afternoon. The governor will be there because, you know, without him it wouldn't be much of a signing ceremony. Um, and uh, we, we are going to invite all the advocates to come and all the people who worked so hard to get this passed over the last few years. I first introduced this bill in 2010. I couldn't get a single co-sponsor. People said I was crazy, which is something I've heard on a number of occasions. But I tried to reach out to people, and I knew, as I've said, given the political makeup of the legislature, I needed a Republican partner. Because this is not a liberal bill, a conservative bill, a Democratic or Republican bill. This transcends all of that. Everyone could get sick. Everyone could have someone they care about get sick. And in such a circumstance, everyone would want nothing more than to get better and to have medicine that got them better. And so that's something that all of us as human beings share. As John F. Kennedy said, we all breathe the same air, we're all mortal. And so that common humanity is something that I thought could reach across partisan bounds. And I talked to a number of folks on the other side of the aisle and there was some fits and starts and as I've said there have been there was a few folks who are like Dalen I'm 100% for you obviously I can't vote with you and we'll have to issue a press release condemning you but I want you to know I'm 100% for you deep down here which was very comforting <laughs> but one day I saw Mike Fulmer on the floor and we started talking and he said I'm for you and I said I know but you can't vote but and he's like no no I'm happy to, to say that publicly and I was like really and we got to talking, and I got to understand the depth of his passion on this issue, and we formed a partnership, which I think can serve if I may be self-aggrandizing for a moment, which I hate to do. <laughs> Hate's a strong word, but in any event, we, this can serve as a model for how legislation can move in a whole variety of areas across the state, reaching across the aisle, addressing each other's concerns, and finding common ground to solve a problem for the people of Pennsylvania. And Mike Fulmer became not just a partner, he became a champion. And that's what we needed to get this bill. This bill never would have happened without Mike, and I want to thank him for, from the bottom of my heart, everything he did. I, I would give him a big kiss, but I know he, he finds that creepy and makes him uncomfortable, so I won't. Um, but I want to thank you. And, and I want to thank, there's so many people to thank, and I'll leave Mike, we'll say a few words. He may want to thank a few people. And we, we tried to do that yesterday on the floor and yesterday here, but I just want to repeat one thank you from the bottom of my heart, which is that the advocates who fought so hard for this. I've been involved in a lot of issues. I've seen high-powered lobbyists, well-paid lobbyists, people from all over the country come in and swoop in and fight on an issue. And some of them have been very good and very wily and very, uh, you know, good at what their job is. But I have never seen advocates more passionate, more effective than the people who fought to get Senate Bill 3 into law. The moms who had sick children, and what could be more, more motivating than that? The veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder, the cancer patients, the people with all kinds of uh, illnesses and had relatives with all kinds of illnesses, they formed an army, and they were relentless, and they were, they were tenacious, and without them, this could not have happened today. So I thank you so much. You've made not, such, not only a difference in your own lives, but a difference in lives of so many people that you will never meet. Finally, before I, as always, reluctantly relinquish the microphone, um, I want to thank Governor Wolf. You know, 
we started this again in 2010, and at the time, um, the governor, uh, who was in office, was not a fan. Um, and we had, to, we had a lot of battles. We had to threaten a sit-in to actually get, get him to meet with us, and that was a, 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 a not a particularly productive meeting. And frankly, we could have accomplished all this, and if a governor was there with a veto pen, it would have all been for nothing. But Governor Wolf came into office, and the first thing he said was, I will sign this bill. And that made all of the difference. That made everything we did real. That made everything that we were fighting for and every effort we made count. And so Governor Wolf, who, who was, you know, in my view, doing many great things for Pennsylvania, this is going to be one of the legacy things that you sign and that you accomplish as governor. And I want to thank you for all of your support and all of your efforts. And with that, I would like to, to introduce uh, the, uh, what county uh, are you from again? York. York. I was going to say the gorilla from Manila or something. I was trying to think of something like that. The, the dork from York isn't quite as what I was going for. But anyway, a true champion, a man who we all owe a huge debt of thanks, Mike Fulmer. This is a problem being short. Um, Folks, I, 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 don't, I am so numb right now. Um, this is about them, the patients. And when we were doing this, uh, and trying to get to the finish line, I realized there was a lot of concern about not just concurring. And I had to stay focused, folks. I had to stay focused. Because I knew we were doing the right thing. And uh, we now have a bill that a governor who is friendly on this issue, who's going to sign it into law, is going to help him be able to do this faster and with less problems. Because, ladies and gentlemen, again, this isn't about myself or Senator Leach or Representative Diamond or Representative Reagan, Pachorka. This is about the patients that are standing here, the moms, the patients. This is about the people of Pennsylvania. So I'm just happy to be part of this. Uh, I'm, I'm honored by, by the accolades, I guess, but there were so many folks that, that made this happen. And, and, and starting out, uh, Dalen, I'm getting a hold of you. And what's, well, the moms, Lolly and Dana came in to see me, and that started it. And then Dalen and we, we, we talked, and, and Dalen was gracious enough. We worked together to do a bipartisan uh, uh, coal prime sponsorship. And then, and then, of course, Senator McElhenney with the first hearing, and then the second hearing. And then we, we got it out of the Senate, not once, but twice. And then the second time we got it out without uh, Representative McRelly's, uh, Nick McRelly's uh, 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 discharge resolution, he'd probably still be in Matt Baker's committee. And, 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 but with all this, this has all been, you know, there was a lot of talk about big money be behind this, this marijuana movement going across the country. This is not big money. Th these are everyday folks who were fighting for their rights. This is what our founders intended lobbying to be. Citizens fighting for their rights. Citizens fighting for the right to make sure that no government would stand between them, their doctors, and their medication. That's what this is about. So I I'm not going to talk anymore because this is, again, about uh, them. And I'm just happy to be here. And like I said, I'm really numb right now. I'm just really happy. Thank you so much. I would say if that numbness persists, I have something that could help you. Um, <laughs> um, I, 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 next, I'd like to introduce someone else from York. I have to think of a better rhyme for York. I really do. Um, but uh, our great, great governor, Governor Tom Wolf. Well, I'm, I am so happy to, to be here. I think th this shows three things that, that we should be really pleased with. First of all, bipartisanship can work, even in the most divided of institutions. And I really appreciate the bipartisan support that this particular bill has brought about. So. 
and especially to someone who is my senator, yes. Mike Fulmer. So you I better be good. Yeah, I'll be good. Sorry. The, uh, the, the second thing that I think this, this shows is, as Senator Fulmer said, when you get good advocacy, really effective lobbying, not professional, but effective, people who come in and from the heart tell you what they think, why this is important to their, them and to their families, that really matters. And you folks did an, a tremendous job. So I just give yourselves a hand. This is really great. And the final thing is, final thing is this shows, this shows that this system actually can deliver a good public policy for Pennsylvania. This is something that actually is not a Republican or Democratic thing. This is not something that is left or right. This is something that's just good for Pennsylvania. And we all came together and promoted something. And on Sunday at 1 o'clock in this rotunda, I will sign a bill that makes this good law, puts this good law into place. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you. Dale. All right, just a, a couple more speakers. We have uh, this event would not be complete without a word from the people who really made this possible, which is the advocates. Now, people ask me how I got involved in this issue originally. I always was for it, but I was sort of, you know, I was dealing with a lot of other issues. But what really made me want to be a champion of this issue was a meeting I had uh, with a woman in, at the in the lobby of the Hilton Hotel here in Harrisburg um, who uh, wanted to talk to me about her son. Um, and uh, what he was enduring. And after hearing her story and doing a little research on how this can be helpful, I was like, I will do whatever I can do. Uh, what, what, if I need to spend the next X number of years of my life fighting for this, that's what we're going to do. Um, and so uh, that woman is here today, and that was, that's uh, Christine Brand, if she could say a few words. This is a great no day. No, no pressure. pressure. No pressure. <laughs> I was very scared when I first met him. I had no idea what to expect. A, a, a very small town Republican meeting, a big time Democrat. Um, so little did I know that this was a bipartisan effort from the very beginning. But we have all made history today, and I could not be more proud of all the efforts of the, our group of parents and patients, and some of them are here today, Heather and Haley and their children and Julie and oh, we and we're hoping that they can make it to the signing. But when we started out three years ago, I thought, oh, I don't know if this is ever going to be possible in Pennsylvania. Am I going to need to move to another state where it is legal? And all the thoughts going through, we have to uproot our family. I'm from Pennsylvania, educated in Pennsylvania. The extended families are all in Pennsylvania and what this has done to our families. So this vote today not only is going to improve the life of our son and make it a better quality of life, but this is going to improve our family and so many families in Pennsylvania. And this vote today is going to make me a better parent. Thank you. Do you want another one for me, Mike? Is that what? Okay. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, That's the last time Republican and Democrat. Hey, I voted for that. All right. No, the, 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 now, um, the, I want to also hear from one more advocate. The person who really, uh, there was a lot of very important people, a lot of leaders, but really took the lead and has been a relentless tiger for this every step of the way. Lolly Latricia Bench. Come on, Mama Bears. Get up here. I, I, I'm just kind of speechless right now. I don't even know what to say. I guess I think the most important thing that we can say today is thank you to our champions in both the House and the Senate. Um, this morning, you know, we, we were in this same spot and there were a lot of tears and so much uncertainty and we were just terrified, you know, and I think that we probably expressed that. <laughs> um, 
Mike, I gotta tell you, buddy, I mean, <laughs> we all agreed, like, this was gonna go one of two ways, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> It was either going to, you know, go down in a ball of flames <laughs> and we were going to be really upset or it was going to go just like this and we were going to call you a hero and thank you for not making a decision based in fear but making a decision based on the needs of Pennsylvania citizens. Well, thank you. Thank you. And Dalen, thank you for your passion on this issue. Um, you've always been passionate about this issue. Even before your meeting with Teeny, you were passionate about this issue and you always knew that it was right. And we want to thank you for paving the way for all of us to come along. And thank you for being a mentor and for educating us on the subject. I, I can't think of very many people that know more about medical cannabis than Dalen, actually. He's got like a photographic memory. It's crazy. Um, so anyway, thank you guys. And thank you to all the House of, of uh, members of the House of Representatives. Um, thank you for not stalling on this issue. Um, as we said this morning, you know, stalling on this issue is really um, it's just standing in the way of a miracle. And I'm just so happy that more of these families can potentially experience something miraculous in their, in their children's lives and in, and in the adult patients' lives as well, you know? Um, more, more Randy Robertsons and more Annas, you know? We need to hear more of that, and today is the day that we're gonna start hearing more of that. Thank you. And finally, before we can take some questions, uh, I, Representative Margo Wiener wants to talk about an aspect of this issue that's important to her. Margo. I, I don't want to belabor the point, but it is just such a tremendous day and such a historic day here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I had two amendments uh, on this bill that I think are vitally important. One, to make sure that it's a level playing field for employees and disadvantaged businesses. But the other one has to do with the disease that I, that I would have not known would be affected by medical cannabis had it not been for the advocates. And advocates came to my office day after day to implore me to support this legislation. Having come from a background of drug and alcohol prevention, treatment, I, I was skeptical. I, I have to admit I was skeptical. But day after day, advocates came to my office to talk to me about um, how this was going to alleviate pain. And so I also was told about how pain was alleviated for sickle cell anemia, a disease that affects African Americans disproportionately. And so that amendment um, was not a one of the agreed to amendments, so there was some risk in putting it forward, um, but the House members voted for it, the Senate kept it, and so we also have treatment for sickle cell anemia in this medical marijuana bill. And I want to thank the advocates for that. When I came off the House floor, after we had voted in the House, and that amendment went in, there was a, there was a legislative employee in my office in tears. And she said, I know you didn't know this, but I want to thank you. And she was a white woman, and she had, her granddaughter had sickle cell anemia. And she said that her granddaughter was on a morphine drip from the time she was three months old. And that this will alleviate her having to be on morphine for the rest of her life. And I cried with her. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Representative Margo Davidson, we actually, I'm sorry, we have, we do have one more speaker, a very important person who, uh, in this legislation in the House, and I think the House should, you know, represent. Um, and that's Joe Petrarca. Do you want to say a few words, Joe? Joe. Thank you, Dalen. Great, uh, great to be here uh, today. Certainly, this is one of those feel-good days in the legislature, in the House, that, that we don't have enough of. But um, very, very proud of, of the work that the House did, uh, Democrats and Republicans working together. And I'm, I'm thrilled that the House Democratic Caucus voted unanimously in favor of this legislation today. Uh, makes it a great statement, a great statement for, for a great cause. And I, I don't think you know, again, when I think about this legislation, I don't know that it would have passed six months ago, maybe certainly not one year ago, but as we were educated and contacted by, by people, by mothers and families and advocates, it, it obviously had a, had a, tremendous, uh, a tremendous effect on us as, as, uh, 
as their voices rang through uh, this Capitol. So glad to be here. Again, wonderful day. I appreciate the work done um, on, in, in both chambers um, and with the governor. It shows, obviously, that we can work together, work together very well um, for the right reasons. Thank you. Okay. I, one more thing. I apologize. I promise this is the last speaker. Very briefly, but very important, Representative Russ Diamond. Thank, thank you, Senator. I just want to capitalize on the one thing that Senator Leach talked about is the bipartisanship here. Actually, I'm going to call it nonpartisanship because seizures don't have a voter registration card that says Republican. PTSD does not have a voter registration card that says Democrat. Um, none of these serious medical conditions are partisan at all. And I am so proud of the way folks from across the aisle, across the chamber, across the Capitol, across the different branches of government have all come together. Governor, we have a lot of differences, but I hope this is the first in many things that we can agree on. Thank you. Okay. Again, thank you for welcoming me back to the podium. Um, the, the, we're gonna, any questions you have for me, for Mike, for the governor, or for any of the advocates, please let me know. Yes, Governor. When exactly will patients be able to obtain the medical? Well, there is always a ramp up period in legislation like this. You have to do some things. You have to, first of all, you have to promulgate applications for licenses. You have to promulgate regulations, which include what those applications look like. What's that? It's in your office right now. The bill? No. Oh, the medical the marijuana. The medicine? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you had told me when I was a kid that I'd be standing here like tr swapping pot jokes with the governor, I never would have believed you. <laughs> By the way, can I just say something about the Go Pennsylvania? This puts Pennsylvania in the first half of the nation in passing this legislation. When is Pennsylvania in the first half of social progress? This is great. Anyway. But, but, so, and so those licenses have to be promulgated. Um, those, those uh, they have to be filled out. Uh, the board has to review them. They have to award licenses. Grow houses have to be built. Seeds have to spontaneously generate and grow. Um, and so uh, there, there are a variety of steps that have to take. My guess is, and it's varied from state to state, but with a friendly governor and a friendly regulatory uh, scheme, my guess is about, probably you'll see dispensaries opening in about 18 months. If I help you have a different. There's a safe haven provision, and, and it's, uh, I don't know if we have the exact, uh, uh, Hohenstein, I don't know if we have the exact, we can refer him to the bill, to, to the number of the citation, but we'll get you that. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a, there's a safe haven, but it's, it will be for those 18 years or younger. So it will be for minors, correct? So that uh, uh, the, the goal was to make sure that uh, parents that have children, like, let's say, suffering through epilepsy would be able to uh, ascertain. That's why it so, was so important to make sure that we, as we did this, we made sure this got done right so that a friendly governor with a friendly uh, a Department of Health and so forth would be able to get this up and running as, as soon as possible. So um, uh, we're hoping that, that uh, uh, by passing this, there, there will be less concern. I guess is the word I'm looking for. Also, in six months, I'm told, we, oh, yes. will, we will have temporary regulations right. for everyone, under 18 and over 18. So within six months, there will be safe haven that allows people who can demonstrate medical need under one of the 17 conditions to right. use that as an affirmative defense in any prosecution for possession of marijuana. In, in 30 days. 30 days. Yep, 30 days from, from signing. Sign, not, sign, signing. So Sunday. 30 days from Sunday. 30 days from Sunday. And uh, incidentally, I did send out a letter when the Senate first passed this bill to all the district attorneys in the state, asking them to I issue a statement saying that they would not prosecute people for possession of medical marijuana pending the passage of this bill. Um, some DAs 
uh, wrote back and said, we do that already, we're already, that is our policy. Uh, others did not write back. A couple wrote back and called me names. So, um, uh, you know, but I'm, 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 despite being a very sensitive individual, I was able to withstand that. But we are going to do the same thing. I'm going to write, send a letter to all DAs saying, now that the bill is becoming law, we're asking you not to take, you know, in the next 30 days, some sick a kid's mother into uh, haul her into court uh, over this, and I hope the DAs will will uh, will agree to that. Any, anything else? Well, I'm glad we were so comprehensive. Thank you so much. We will see everyone one o'clock on Sunday.